I don't have to say shit. I don't have to say anything. Did you shoot that gun? Where did you shoot it? I just heard nothing wrong. When a crime has been committed... Did he hit her in the face? There could be a gun up here anywhere. Detectives must first identify a suspect. He's covering his face as he goes past it. Got this girl here. Still looking, looking back as she walks away. Yeah, that is bang in the middle of the crime times. Next, they must search for rock-solid evidence. The offenders were wearing balaclavas. The gun is crucial, isn't it? Yeah. Juries are told you must be sure, but it's so difficult to hit that test. Then they must put their case to the test, face to face with the suspect in the interview room. You often sit in a small room, no more than two or three feet between you and the person who has raped, murdered, burgled, stolen. Here's a little bit of a game, I guess. Chess, poker. If you move one piece, they move another one. Will the evidence stand or fall? Will the suspect tell the truth or will they manage to hide it? They will do anything, say anything. We are lied to frequently. They can muddy the waters in any way they want. This time, detectives face two suspected serial burglars after a massive crime wave. The fourth burglary occurred around about 4 p.m. His bedroom door opened and an unknown male appeared in the doorway. Was that you, Tommy? Across the city, there's a huge spike in burglaries, and Detective Inspector Chris Burgess and his team now have the challenge of finding out who's responsible. We treat house burglaries really, really serious in Norfolk. It's a really nasty crime, a real violation of someone's personal space, someone's privacy. I imagine you are quite concerned that somebody's come in while you've been sleeping. Mm. We want to find out who this is and we want to charge them and obviously mm. get them locked yeah. up. Yeah. Usually I would expect us to get 30 to 35 burglaries a month. We've been pushing close to 50. The MO of that one is completely identical to one of these ones, because that's actually a very short distance away. We focus on laptops and tablets and not jewellery, so stuff that's very small, easy to get away with. Burglars can commit four, five, six burglaries a night, two or three nights a week. It's not like a one-off incident. If you don't stop a burglar committing burglaries, they will keep going until they're stopped. The detectives believe one man recently released from prison, could be responsible for the surge in burglaries. Tommy Kroll is someone that's been committing crime for 25 years. He's well known in the city. Most seasoned detectives that I've worked with will know Kroll. Very shortly after coming out of prison, he's lost his script, which means the only way he can feed his heroin habit is by stealing and thieving and breaking into people's houses. Kroll has multiple previous convictions for burglary and detectives have been on his tail for weeks. Now, he's unexpectedly been placed under arrest by uniformed officers after they were called to a fight at a house. Mate, Tommy Cole has been nicked in Norwich. Tommy's obviously of interest for these six burglaries out in the area. His background, he's a drug user. He sofa surfs around the city and burgling basically around where he lives. Kroll has no fixed address and is hard to locate. So the detectives don't want to miss the chance to confront him face to face. We get a lot of no comment interviews. And I think the reason for that is because there doesn't appear to be a benefit to sort of speak up early, you know. Experienced criminals certainly realise if you hold out until you can see all the police evidence, then, then you can base your accounts around that. But while Kroll may be suspect number one for a string of burglaries, so far they have little evidence to prove it. The odds are massively in his favour. We don't have the evidence to charge him. So it's important we use this opportunity to interview him to get as much from him as possible. And I fully suspect it's the type of interview that someone of his offending history won't answer any questions. 
Can you tell me your full name? Thomas Michaelis Crow. Are you happy if I call you Tommy? Yeah. Yeah, is that all right? Okay. Tommy, just before this interview, I did arrest you on suspicion of a further eight burglaries, okay? And I'm going to put these to you. Four burglaries were all committed on the 23rd of July during the day at Casson View Court. A large amount of property was stolen, totaling over £1,600. Are you responsible for the burglary at that address? I'm going to move on. There are three more burglaries I have to ask you about, and the, the what we call the MO, the modus operandi, the, the way the burglaries were committed, were all very similar to those that were commit, committed on the 23rd of July in the Cat and Grove Road area. Do you know anything about it? I'll, I'll put it to you simply, at this stage, we believe you're involved in the commission of those offences, eh, because they're linked by the same MO, they're linked by the same types of search conducted inside, the same type of property going missing. You were seen in the area of the five burglaries committed on the 23rd, or sorry, four burglaries committed on the 23rd. You were wearing the clothes that matches the description, the, the clothes that were seen by the witnesses, and those witnesses give a description which would generally match you as well. Is there anything at all you want to say about that? Have we got it wrong? From what we're telling him at the moment, he will know that we don't have enough to charge him. And that'll make him smile. Tommy, is there anything else before we conclude the interview? If, you, just, if you're willing to do me, the, um, do me the, the honour of answering that question, do you, want, do you want to say anything, Tommy? No. OK, thank you, Tommy. Look, it's, um, it's 12 minutes past five, and we'll, uh, we'll conclude the interview. This time, the detectives are frustrated. They have no choice but to set him free. The ball was in his court for this interview. We didn't have enough, but our aim now is to turn those tables. The next time we interview him, I want us to be in a position of power. He'll keep committing crime. He will make a mistake, and that's when we'll catch him. Emergency. Go ahead, caller. Hello, um, I've just got home from work and my house has been broken into. With burglary suspect Tommy Kroll released from custody, the crime wave continues across the city. In the past two, three months, we've had a series of burglaries occurring across Norwich. All these little dots indicate burglaries that have happened in that time. We've got a little series around here, a little sort of cluster of crimes happening around there of burglaries, and also the large one around Mar Cross up here which again, we, we sort of attribute to the same offender. Seasoned burglars are often hard to catch. Every time we lock them up, they, they remember how we locked them up, what we did to prove what they've done. Tommy Kroll will wear gloves. He'll be careful not to cut himself at a scene. He'll discard items. He won't carry stolen property with him. And he'll make a mistake. Or we'll get lucky or we'll do a great bit of detective work. Whether it be CCTV, whether it be property, whether it be clothing, whatever it may be, it will come. Every new burglary is a chance to find a clue that could trip up Tommy Kroll. All my doors and fridges and everything is open, everything is in a state. Was there anyone in the property when you came No, home? no. Okay. I just got in and everything is just yeah. in a mess. Oh, everything okay. is done. Been upstairs and everywhere. Yeah, so the whole house is really untidy, yep, yep. is it? Okay. Oh my god. Bastards. Detective Ryan Westrop thinks there are potential links to Tommy Crawl. So, this particular one where we're going to, I think he's got either a girlfriend or a partner that lives in that estate. He certainly has links to that location. Obviously, that's very speculative at this stage, but he could well be someone to maybe have a look into. Hi there. Hello, sir. DC Westrop from Norfolk oh, Police. Oh, yeah. Are we all right to come in? Yeah, of course you are, yeah. Perfect, yeah. thank you very much. Okay, so the smash there, and that's it, the key. Yeah. yeah. In my office, they just, they took all my iPads and everything. They've been upstairs as well, or yeah, is it? Yeah, wrecked upstairs. They've gone 
gone through her bag there, I don't know if her purse has gone. And then my watch is gone. And are you okay? Good. Good, actually. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just such a mess. And, you know, there's no need for it. To, you know, if someone has been in here, I mean, that's horrible, really. Yeah. That's about all really I can say. You know, we could say something else, but uh, I'd rather not. Not content with the whore, the burglar even helped himself to a snack. That yep. was in the fridge. Okay. Had a bite and chucked it in there, so I didn't. Uh... Well, we can speak with CSI and whether or not they'll be able to gain any forensics from it. Yeah, then. yeah. If it is Kroll, he will have avoided CCTV cameras and won't have left fingerprints or DNA. But he just might have left a shoe print. What are the chances of getting? Well, the forensics element, if Tom's able to get anything, that will get submitted off. That can take a little while to come back, um, as soon as we get any updates. I will certainly be in touch with you. CSI will lift every print they can and compare them to every recent burglary. Then they can see if this burglar, whether it is crawl or not, has left a clue. Burglary in progress. Burglar is in the property. He has a crowbar. Another 999 call for a daytime burglary comes in. It fits Kroll's method, and this time, the burglar is still at the scene. He's still at the property now. He was when I now called it. I'm trying to keep an eye at the front. I'm just trying to keep a low profile. Just as the police arrive, a man is escaping at the front of the property. Now riding there, and they pulled up. Oh, we've got him. Oh, we've got someone detained. Great. All right, cute arms still. Sit. Come on, he's very oh. The burglar is caught trying to get away with a bag of stolen items. But it's not Tommy Crawl. It is another known offender, Joe Creed. Police have gone there, arrested that person, they're now being taken to custody. But the main thing for now is going to secure all the evidence that we can at the scene, make sure we're not losing any evidence. For Detective Chris Edwards, it's vital that he gathers as much information as he can at the scene before he confronts the suspect in the interview room. How did you first learn about the burglary you addressed today? Who called you first? My son, my eldest son called me. Right, OK. And what was it? What did he say to you? Yeah, he said, I think you might want to come home now. We've been burgled. Right. Just have a look around where, where you can see. Right, there's a t shirt gone out of that. Yeah. And a card. Mm -hmm. There's a card gone out of that one. Mm -hmm. There's a bottle of whiskey and a bottle of gin missing. Okay, we'll go through here now then. When they go upstairs, there is evidence that this burglar could potentially have been dangerous. Is this yours? Do you nope. recognise this? No. Nope. What would you call that? That looks like a crow rat. And that? That's a, is that a knife. That's what I would say it looks like. Yeah. OK. The knife and the crowbar raise the stakes. If a burglar is carrying something that could be used as a weapon, they can face much longer sentences but proving the more serious charge of aggravated burglary requires an extra layer of proof. You see finger, 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 palm. Joe Creed may know that the knife and the crowbar could put him at risk of a longer prison sentence. He doesn't want to be convicted of the more serious offence of aggravated burglary because that's obviously a more serious punishment. If he's worn gloves, then he'll think, well, my fingerprints aren't on those items. He will be thinking, I'm going to admit to the things I have to admit to, but the other things that will make it more serious, I'm not going to admit to and perhaps come up with a story. With Joe Creed in custody, the detectives are on the clock. They have 24 hours from his arrest to make a charge or release him. But Creed is refusing to come out of his cell to be questioned. Instead, he has prepared a statement. Dems in use by uh, 
Officer 1392 and 514 Edwards and Saw for the purpose of conducting an interview at the cell. Joe, as stated earlier, we do still need to interview you for the offences as to why you're here today. Okay, so I'm just going to conduct the interview as per normal. All right. I accept I entered the address. I did not break into the address. Someone else did. I do not wish to name that person. I did not take a crowbar and a knife into the address. What was not answered was whether or not you used the crowbar for the purpose of forcing open the patio door to gain entry to the address. Still awake, Joe? Joe? Still awake? Buddy? Still awake, all right. Yeah, you you can do a here, telling you what I'm to say here, yeah? mm -hmm. the truth here, yeah? and you're still in there trying to manipulate shit here, yeah? and trying to do DNA fucking shit. My parents are DNA is doing that noise. Stop the side, there's always other workers. What's going on? Go on. Okay. Well, Joe, I think it was you doing the burger on your own. Yeah. Okay. But I've got no more questions. It's the end of the interview. Time's 23.47. Joe Creed's version of events could be enough to get him off the charge of aggravated burglary. At the moment then, we've got him putting himself in the address, saying that he is responsible for burgling it, effectively. Yeah. Entered the trespasser, stole, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but denies entering, says it was someone else. The only issue we have got is the fact that, obviously, we can't put the knife in his hand. Without any forensics. Without the forensics, yeah. So yeah, he's tried to distance himself from that weapon so he doesn't get the higher offence. It's definitely muddied the waters, his account. It's enough to throw that element of doubt and seed in sort of into CPS that perhaps he didn't have the knife, perhaps he did. The team submits all the evidence to the Crown Prosecution Service. And finally, at 3.30 in the morning, they get an answer. I hate to disappoint you here, but it didn't go with the in the world. What? He has no relevant free parts for weapons or aggravated burglary, burglary, so he's likely to rely on his own record in that regard. Hmm. Even if he hadn't have concocted a story, it would be still difficult to prove that he had that knife in his possession at any point, because it wasn't found on him, it wasn't found near him, it was found in the house, um, and there's too many unknowns with it for CPS to say, that they'd be happy to take that to court. As he has admitted being involved in the burglary, Creed will be charged and remanded in custody. But it's clear that he wasn't the cause of the huge surge in burglaries, as the crime wave shows no sign of stopping. Every day I come in and I see a couple more burglaries. I see the figures that are three times higher than they've been for a number of months. And we're under a lot of pressure from the public because there's an expectation that we stop these people committing these offences. You do feel the pressure and you do feel the frustration, personally. But there is a new lead on the burglary where iPads, jewellery, money and a bounty ice cream bar were stolen. There's a chance it could lead to Tommy Kroll. I've uh, got a really partial footprint in the front bedroom, the one with the shiny floor. It's not a lot of it, it's just little... Um, Pentagons, like pentagons inside pentagons. Okay, yeah. Uh, I've researched it for the last three months. Um, yeah. Nobody's been arrested with that mark, and there's no other uh, burglaries at the same mark. So, just for your file. Yeah. Okay, perfect, thank you. The footprints could be the first piece of the jigsaw. Then another piece falls into place. Hours of searching through CCTV have revealed a promising set of images. Right, that's the address there. I've got this girl here walking past with a bag. Right. And she goes into the front of it. Now the occupants are out, and the occupants weren't expecting anyone. Now the theory is potentially she could be knocking at the front door while A and others around the back. Yeah, just checking. But she went straight to that address. Mm. What's she doing now? Is she going to use her phone? Like she's texting or something. I'd say it's probably a phone. Mm. Oh, she's come back the same way. 
And she's looking in this address. And she's still looking, looking back as she walks away. Okay. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll try and get a still of her, if I don't recognise her. But that is bang in the middle of the crime time. And it doesn't quite look right, does it? No. I'll circulate to see if we can identify her. Potentially somewhere around the area, wouldn't it, from mm. the local? Mm. The fact that it is so narrow, two hours, and she goes to that specific address, is a fantastic bit of luck. And that little bit of footage we found today could be a massive, massive, really important bit of evidence. When the CCTV image is shown around the force, a possible ID is made. And the woman named appears to be close to a familiar figure. She is linked to Tommy Kroll, who is one of our prolific burglars. He's got a sparkling personality. We're just getting some CCTV when they were last seen in probation a couple of days ago. See if they're similar. Kroll's in there with her. And she's not wearing the same clothing, and it's not brilliant, but it's a case of similar bag, very it? similar bag. Um, it's not a unique bag, but I need degree, is it? No, but it's, it's, it's another little bit towards being her, isn't it? And they're definitely a couple. She doesn't look like she's got a drug problem herself. But I think we can quite happily say that's her from everything we've got so far. We, we can't say it's definitely not her. No, but then it doesn't give us... Yeah. She hasn't actually done anything wrong. Other than the fact that that is within the two hour window yeah. this has got burglary, yeah. yeah. which makes it incredibly suspicious. Yeah. It's all stacking up, just got to find that one bit to link them all to it. Tommy's quite smart, he would use someone like her because yeah. ultimately she's not going to flag up to us. No, yeah. It's definitely not unusual that people like Kroll do use the vulnerability of the women and the people they have relationships with um, to their advantage. He can use her to be involved and, and perhaps take more risks in some of the crimes that he's involved in. The connection makes Tommy Kroll suspect number one for at least one of the string of burglaries. And finally, there are leads to follow. Two more serious burglaries have come in overnight. For detectives John Goulson and Luke Saw, Tommy Kroll is suspect number one. A yeah, tub of heroes on the kitchen worktop have been completely empty. One unwrapped sweet has been left in the tub. I bet they left the caramel ones behind. They've actually left the bounties behind. <laughs> the overnight burglaries could reveal some more shoe prints. And if it's Tommy Kroll, they could prove to be his downfall. Could I ask you just to keep away from those areas where you think somebody might have walked? We've had um, success recently with a number of burglaries where we've managed to retrieve shoe prints from the scene of the burglary that might be able to identify a suspect. After scouring every square inch of the property, CSI have recovered a footprint that doesn't belong to the family that live there. It's an untidy search downstairs. CSI have found what they think are probably glove marks at the point of entry and inside. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but they have got a partial shoe print, which appears to be foreign to the address. Now, this is the partial lift they've got. That could be this bit here, couldn't it? It could be. It could be, yeah. Uh, it looks as though it would be around this area here. The heel. But yeah, which would... It's difficult, sorry, it's difficult. When you look at these ones. Yeah. I know, it's just difficult, but yeah. the hexagons don't see them very often, do you? We've got some footprints, which is similar to other burglaries. And the key with footprints is catching that person wearing those shoes. Getting those shoes shortly after the burglary to give us the best opportunity possible to forensically confirm they're the same, the same shoe um, as committed the mark. So we need to find the person wearing that shoe as soon as we can. The key to the case is now linking Kroll to the shoe prints. They have a decision to make. Do they have sufficient grounds to arrest Kroll in order to find out if his shoes are a match? Or even you, I think, Coxie. We've okay. got a moment. It was good. Right. Let's talk about Tommy Kroll, mate. I mean, I think, for me, the problem we've got we're over 100 dwellings more than I'm comfortable with yeah. in the last three months. 
Because overnight we had about three, didn't we? Because overnight we had three. So then what are your thoughts, mate? And where are we at? We haven't got a confirmed that that is his missus going to the front door. No, we haven't. But I think I'm happy that it is. You're right. I think it is her. Yeah. I don't think we could put an evidential statement to say that. And actually, what does that prove? Yeah. However, let's, let's, get, let's get a little bit old-fashioned in it. Reasonable suspicion? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I was, I was thinking the fact that we've got now two footprints that's the same from two different crime scenes in the same area. The footwear, for me, is the key. So the two options are we, we nick him on Friday, see what footwear he's got, then we can rule him in or rule him out. Yeah. And we nick her as well. Well, I think that, that's my point. I think we need to get them both together. Yeah. And I would suggest if we can get footwear that's similar, that's when we think about thresholds, isn't it? If he's out there with her and we get an opportunity, then we have to do what we have to do, don't we? Yeah, definitely. All right, buddy, thank you for that. Tommy Kroll will know that his footwear might incriminate him. He won't want to be arrested wearing the same shoes he used in a burglary. So the detectives must catch him unawares. Don't let anyone be spooked by the fact it's Friday the 13th and full moon. Wouldn't put them two together. Yeah, it was Sebastian Barrows. Oh, right. Tonight, you've chosen number two. Tommy Gold. Tommy likes crap. He's attracted to gold. How many prints do we want? Six? Yeah. That footprint, um, just been speaking to CSI. It's linked to three burglaries now. Should we go at the back and have a quick chat? Today, Kroll is due to attend a compulsory probation meeting in the centre of Norwich. He's going to probation at half one. Probation, as usual, aren't keen for us to go steaming in because it upsets everyone and stops them attending. So once he's in front of probation, it's two long buildings that he can't get anywhere from, so we can just pin him into that area there all the better. That's why I'm thinking, wait for him to come out first. Try not to make a big deal if, he, if he's got Nikes on, but if we can get an early steer of what his bottom of his shoe's like, that'd be good. If he has got the footwear on with the hexagonals, we'll then be further arresting him for the Caddo Road burglary, which happened two days ago, where we've got some similar footprint marks. If at any point we think we've spooked him, he sees us, and you think it's getting a bit weird, we'll just get hold of him. Let's, let's not antagonise the situation. We don't need to be overly heavy-handed with him. If he's playing ball, we play ball. Come. I'll get going, I'll meet you there. Believe it, 7 2, heading to the Powerland of Magdalene Street. Crawl is spotted by uniform officers, but DS Cox is worried that they might spook him. If he makes a run for it, he might buy time to get rid of his shoes. Five five zero. Stay away from the nearest DRD unit at the moment. About to apprehend him. Beautiful unit. Stay away from Magnus Street. Put the eyes on. Hi, Tommy. Yeah, we've got them. Can you bring the car here as quick as you can? Can you just take your hands out of your pocket, just so you don't expose anything? Yeah. Luke, just keep an eye. Not too tight? No. Is there anything sharp in the bag? Any needles or anything like that? You got any on you? Cool. If you two want to take him in, if you do the search and you and Matt run her in. Yeah. Phil, what shoes have you got? Yeah, he's got right. When the detectives were tracking Kroll just before his arrest, Luke saw spotted something that could prove important. As I followed him, they put some in it in the green recycling. You know okay. the clothes bank? Yeah. So I don't know what's in that. There's something in that clothes bank. If you and Beachy run him in, yeah. me and Chris will have a look in that bin. Literally, we were in the car park up by um, St Xavier's waiting, and he walked past us. So we thought, Fuck it, we just walked down the road and followed him and just got hold of him. But Luke saw him put something in one of these bins up here, which... So when I walked round here, he's fucking out of sight. 
but I saw her standing in between the main rig and the trailer. Yeah. She's underneath there with a handbag on the floor and him doing something, but I didn't pay too much attention. But before that, he walked straight up to that bin there, the clothes bank. Put something straight in, really quick, sharp, and then just fucked off. Don't drop your phone in. And there's a small scrunched up Tesco's bag that looked like trainers on the top. See the laces underneath the handle? Right. We're going to have to find out how to get the key for this. Good afternoon. It's um, DS Cox here from Norfolk Police in Norwich. We've just had um, someone put something in a clothing bin in Norwich that um, we think that he's trying to hide property and we urgently need it. To try and pinpoint the bag they were carrying, Luke grabs some CCTV from nearby. She's carrying the bag. They come from over there. Red handled. Yeah. Right, Nick's getting some from Kings Lynn to go and get the keys to bring them here. There's shoes and they fit the pattern. You know what the pattern looks like? Hexagonal yeah. or pentagons. It's five sided. Yeah. Pentagonal. So, yeah, all right. You sure? Happy? Yeah? Yeah. Now they're in custody. Tommy Kroll and his partner can be confronted by detectives once again. Tommy, when you were arrested around 13.26 on your person, um, police officers found uh, a small quantity of what they believe to be Class A drugs, okay? So I'm further arresting you with suspicion of possession of Class A drugs, okay? Yeah, you can speak privately, a member of staff, about yeah. personal issues, if you wish. Could I? No, I'm not. Dependent on alcohol. Dependent on drugs, I say. Yeah. Kroll has one item of clothing. It's hardly worn. It looks brand new. Yeah. Do you go specific splice shoes on or anywhere? I'm thinking that Tesco bag there, possibly shoes, that one over there. Definitely looks like it's got shoes in it from here anyway. I will touch nothing then. It looked like a white bag, yeah, so. Look at that pentagonal pattern, like you said the exact pattern we're looking for on the base, which is really, really quite good, to be honest with you. It's uh, better than we could expect, because he's got a brand new pair of shoes on in custody that he bought today at quarter past one, so it goes a bit of weight to, towards the case, really, so it's quite good, really pleasing, really good. When the pair is searched, Kroll's partner's bag contains some items that could be stolen property and important evidence. One. Two, three diamond rings, an oldish Gucci watch, Oreo Armani. But there's also something more sinister. And her knife, where was that? That was in the lining of her bag. So we emptied all her bag, and then I just shook the bag and tipped it on the floor, and the knife came out through a small hole in the lining. As they make further follow up calls, the items match ones stolen at the recent burglaries. Okay, cheers, bye. She had a Gucci watch stolen and some other jewellery from oh, Caddo Road. Caddo Road? Beautiful. Yes. Marvellous. We didn't find any stolen property on Tommy, but we found all stolen property on her. If he got to find the stolen property in his pocket, it's almost game over for him. So Tommy would be exploiting the fact that she's no trace and she's not known to police. So if she gets caught in property, she's not going to be in as much trouble as he is. The detectives believe they now have a much stronger hand. They have enough evidence to confront both Kroll and his partner about the burglaries, but they must still get their tactics right. Right, now what I'm going to do is we're going to interview her first. OK. And the idea of that is that as we go on through that interview, you'll then disclose the CCTV to her and say, right, you haven't accounted for being in the area, but let me tell you now, you're, you're a CCTV of you knocking at the front door. What I don't want to do is tell her about the footwear 
before we interview Kroll, because they've got the same solicitor. Yeah. Once we come out of interview with her, we'll then go and interview Kroll, and we'll interview him on the basis of girlfriend seen knocking at the door, and we have footwear marks at the address. It's trying to get a, a sort of a lie out of him, effectively. As the interview goes on, we then drop in about the fact that we found his footwear, but that's for the challenge phase at the end. Hi, it's uh, Chris and Beth from CID. Up to you. Thank you. If they can get his partner to talk, they'll have more evidence to confront Kroll with. The ideal scenario is that we put all the pressure on her to talk and we give her the evidence and she turns around and goes, no, it wasn't me, it was Tommy, and, and introduces him into it. Tommy quite clearly said to her, go, no comment. Now, for her, no comment could be one of the worst yeah. things she does because ultimately, if she has got a reason to, to be there and a reason to be involved and there is duress involved and, and other elements, we need to know now so we can present that to the court later on. The whole structure of interviews is that we slowly build up the pressure for them to realise at a certain point, well, no, I am a bit more involved in this and the police know I'm more involved in it. So, we're here to talk about um, three burglaries and um, a possession of a knife, which you've been arrested for. If there's anything uh, that we say that you don't understand, just let me know, okay? First of all, you've been arrested for possession of a kitchen knife. Tell me about that. No comment. Okay. Can I ask, do you intend to answer no comment to all questions in relation to the knife? Yes. Okay. I want to ask you about um, some property now which you had on you when you were arrested, okay? The watches that you've got in your property have been identified from one of the victims of these burglaries as theirs. You've got stolen property on you, it's confirmed as stolen. Can you account for that? No comment. Potentially in a lot of trouble here. We've got a small space of time to try and get her to realise the fact that talking is probably in her best interest if she has been forced into it. But I'd imagine inside she'd probably be panicking a little bit. So we've got some CCTV which shows a female which uh, appears to be you. Can you tell me about that? No comment. OK. If, if that was you, what were you doing? No comment. And you go to the front door and knock on the front door? Is that right? No comment. Um, there's no-one else? at the front of the address with you? Is there anyone else, anywhere else? No comment. Is there someone at the back of the address? No comment. You're smiling, is there something that you're thinking? No. Nope. Okay. Comment. So before I switch the recording off, is there anything you want to say at all? No. Are you protecting Tommy? No comment. Do you love him? Okay. With his partner refusing to talk, the detectives must now confront Tommy Kroll with the evidence they already have. Last time the detectives confronted Tommy Kroll in the interview room, they couldn't charge him. Have the cards now turned in their favour? Tommy Kroll is in custody again. We're in a better position. We've got footmarks at scenes and we've got what we believe are the shoes that we used at those burglaries. So our plan for interview now is really around that crucial piece of evidence that he doesn't potentially know about that we can use to strengthen our case against him. We need to show who was wearing those footwear at that time. Tommy could say to us, I ditched those for someone else. Extremely unlikely. We've got to prove it otherwise. If Tommy Kroll remains silent this time, it could harm his defence. But if he can somehow find a way to cast doubt on the evidence, it could sway the Crown Prosecution Service against charging him. You've been arrested for three burglaries and possession of a Class A drug. So that's what I'm going to ask you about in this interview. If possible, I'd like you to look at me when I ask you the questions. It helps me know that you're listening to what I'm saying and that you I'm understand. I'm listening, me. mate, yeah? Just go on with the interview, yeah? I don't have to say shit. I don't have to say anything. But you are right. You don't. Yeah, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not okay. saying nothing, all right? Okay. Tommy, I want to ask you about some CCTV. That shows a lady walking to the front of that address. 
tell me all about that. Are you aware that she was at the front of that address? With someone like Tommy, going no comment is what he is ingrained to do. The stakes have changed because obviously we know that we've got more evidence. The fact we've got the footwear, he won't know what we've got in our back pocket. You were seen on CCTV at the Norwich Probation Office at 12.42 on the 6th of September 2019, wearing what appears to be some Nike trainers. You tell me about those trainers. Some shoes were found in a, a clothes recycling or clothes donation bin. Those shoes have got the same tread pattern as footwear marks recovered from each of those three burglaries. And then today you've been seen throwing away some shoes with the same footwear mark as, as those burglaries. Can you tell me anything about that? It's clear that you are doing burglaries together to fund your drug habit. She's got watches in her possession, in custody, that have been identified as stolen from one of these burglaries. Come on, Tommy. We know you did it. Just tell us about it. This time, going no comment may not be enough to get Kroll off the hook. But the detectives cannot yet be sure that the charges will stick. They must now put the evidence to the CPS to see if they'll charge both of them. They've said nothing. No one's admitted to anything. No one's denied anything. Hopefully we get a good decision out of it. From CPS. I think so. We're not home yet though, are we? Because noth nothing's absolutely certain. I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't bet my life that they're gonna charge on this. Hey. There shouldn't be that many people in the whole of Britain going for CPS charging decisions at quarter to three in the morning. Okay, so here we go. Okay, Kroll. So this is what it's going to be charged with. Yep. Possessing a controlled drug of Class A heroin. Yep. Burglary dwelling and theft on the third. Burglary dwelling and theft on the eleventh. Burglary dwelling and theft on the twelfth. So that's Ooh. all three burglaries. As a result. And the uh, possession of heroin. Uh, <laughs> all of them. Possessing the knife. Uh, burglary on the third. She went with everything we went for, she went for. Yes! Ah, good. That was worth it. Yes. With Kroll now remanded in custody, awaiting trial, the burglary situation in Norwich looks very different. If you look at this side, we've got the burglaries from the 1st of September up until the 12th. So it's quite clear you can see the, the area around Earlham and that's up to Mar Cross. That's where we think he was active in that little, that sector really of, Nor of Norwich. If you go from the 13th, which is the day he was arrested up until now, to the 19th, yeah, it's only a six day period, but it's significantly less crimes happened on this one. So we've got five. Quite obviously, we've got none in that massive area there. We've got one just on the edge of Mar Cross, which has to tell you one thing really, that. Kroll must have been active doing them once. We've not locked up anyone else since. Yep. Chances are it must have been Kroll. Next time. Detectives investigate nine suspects found at a major cannabis factory. That is seriously organised crime. And the suspect in a vicious street robbery. He's ripping the bag of a hand on the floor, and as he's doing it, he's sort of windmilling into her. He's really reckless. 